this girl likes me. There is something here. You don't use the word love so carelessly and on social media. I know it was about sushi, but that opened my heart. It was about sushi. And I was like, I got a message to school. So that, that message sparked something in my heart. Hope was regained. Hello, Kai Piga. Hello, Hello Prieten. Meet my husband. This is my amazing husband, Sebastian Alaro. He is the best husband in the world, and I love him so much. So I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, since I was a teenage girl, and I can't wait to meet that man so that I can make these YouTube videos with him, introducing him, so this is finally happening. And let me just brag on him for a while. My husband is just the most profound, amazing person you will meet and he's just such a likable person already. Not only is he powerful, you know, as a preacher, as a minister, but you know, knowing him even behind the scenes, there's a reason why I'm so in love and head over heels. I, love <laughs> I always look to the um, Bible character Boaz because he is just, you know, a godly character of what a man of God should look like. And today we're gonna tell the story of how we met. Are you excited? I am indeed. Is this your first YouTube video outside of preaching? Yes. <laughs> no, it's not. We made a Valentine's video. <laughs> Last year, actually. Yeah. Sure. And I love him so much. So, we first met at this uh, gathering for Christian uh, entertainer artists in Vancouver. I was in someone's house. I went and I didn't expect much. I was going to support my friend who was leading it. And we all sat down and then next thing I know, out of my right side, here comes this beautiful, amazing young lady. And she crawls up, she sits next to me, I think she brushed against my knee. And I was like, wow, whoa, this girl likes me. And, and I obviously liked her, she was amazing, she was beautiful, I was like, wow. I didn't expect to see her here. And during the whole meeting, I'm trying to act cool, but on the inside, I'm trying to discern, like, who is she? I'm praying, like, Lord, show me who is this girl? What is she all about? I was, I was gone. I didn't even know what the meeting was about, but my whole focus was next to Melkia, who was sitting on my right side. And at the end of the meeting, she ends up praying for me and giving me an amazing, uh, encouraging, prophetic word. And I was like, wow, this girl is not only beautiful, cool, fashionable, but she hears the voice of God and she's a powerhouse. And at the end of that meeting, she gave me this, this <laughs> big hug. It was like a heart hug. It hugged my heart and I was gone. I was like, wow, this girl is it. She left such an impression with me. It was... It was wow. I was in Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland. Oh, baby, I love you. My side of the story was basically I have been interning there for about like a year and I've been attending for two years. And so this event was like, I was very familiar with the people, I was friends with everybody. So I came a little late that day and well later than when he came and I opened the door I saw someone like new but I kind of ignored it and because I was like really caught up I'm, I can be very outgoing when people are around and then when people started it was actually held in one of my friends basements so there was not enough seats so we were all um, seated circling each other and then I glanced at Sebastian for the first time and he was wearing this blue tur turtleneck and it was this knitted turtleneck and I don't know anyone else who wears this turtleneck and, and, then, <laughs> and so I looked at him and he had like this big giant beard and he was bulky like you know like like good bulky like he's been working out and at the time I was a little intimidated with like like big strong man and I saw him and as I was um uh I was like very I found it very mysterious and my spirit was trying to tell me something hmm like I, I want to know more about this person so the I did the funniest thing that someone could ever do was I crawled up to him 
with like my hands and my feet and my knees. I crawled up to the carpet close to him. I didn't stand up. I crawled up to him <laughs> and I sat next to him to discern him better. And as I was discerning him, God kind of gave me this vision of he was like such a great father and a great um, like husband. And so I thought maybe he's married because he, I was like, I don't know how old he is. But it was so funny. But prior to that, as I was actually crawling to Sebastian, I had this the this thought and I did not know it was the spirit was saying what if he's my future husband and at that moment I caught myself and my head said don't be a creep don't be a creep don't think of someone like that and at the end I could notice that some people like, highly respected him and honored him and so I was like I feel a little bit of intimidation here but I want to give him a prophetic word so I stood up and I was like, I'm not afraid of you. I don't give you a prophetic word. And I think that was one of the best things that I've done that day was that I got the courage to come up to him and give him a prophetic word. And at the end, I just welcomed him and I gave him a hug and didn't think anything about it. But I did not know that I met my husband on that day. So I go home that night and I'm thinking about Malkia. I, I actually messaged one of my friends and like, hey, check this girl out. I met her tonight and I believe she might be the one. And he actually looks at her Facebook and he's like, are you sure? Like, are you sure she likes you? And I'm like, yeah, I tell you, she gave me a hug. She sat next to me. And as I look, I actually see a friend request come in and Melkea actually sends me a friend request. So I accept it and I message her right away saying, Oh, you're an amazing woman of God. <laughs> God's gonna use you, he has great plans for you. And then nothing, no response. Malkia didn't even read my message. It stayed as a blue mark, unread. And I was like, okay, maybe it's not gonna work out. Maybe she's seeing someone. It was September. The following spring, I hosted a conference and at the end of the conference, on the final night, I, I see Melkia there and I go to talk to her as she's leaving and I'm all excited. I'm like, hey, how are you? And I think I went to give you a hug and you did not give me a hug back. I think you reached out your hand and we shook hands and I'm like, oh man, does this girl not remember me? I'm like, <laughs> Am I not <laughs> good looking enough for her? Uh -huh. Anyways, I, yeah, nothing really happened at the end of the conference. I thought maybe she'll see me, I'm at the front, but <laughs> well, anyways, yeah. it didn't work out. I was like, <laughs> Well, in my side of the story, I, like, I did not know that Sebastian was hosting a conference. Like, I was just invited by two of my friends, and I had zero expectation. I didn't even remember that he remembers me. And so, at the end, he was talking to um, some of my friends, and when he came up to say hello to me, it was this kind of, like, tone of, like, he knows me? And I was a little shocked, and at the same time, of like, Sebastian, I don't know, and and I, co I ignored him, and I, I literally, I think, just like looked past him, didn't even acknowledge him, or like I said, hi, I didn't even shake his hand. Just right before that, I was looking at him when he was with his friends in the distance, and I said, wow, like, what an attractive man, like, he is <laughs> so attractive. He had his watch, he was like, like, you know, he had his muscles, and... As he was talking, like, you look like a model. You look like those men in magazines and, like, you are so attractive. And I think there's a part of me where I'm like, you, you're, too, you're way too good for me. And so I think a part of that ignorance where he thought it was rejection is part of insecurity, actually, that I thought that he was out of my league. <laughs> you know, I was handsome and I never put my eyes on. Oh, thank you, love. So fast forward to the end of that year, the conference was in springtime, February, now we're in November, Thanksgiving Day. I post a story about sushi, <laughs> me having sushi with a friend on Instagram, and next thing you know, I get a message from Melkia saying like, hey, you don't know how much I love that you love sushi or something, and include the word love, and as soon as I saw the word love in the message, I was like, 
Wow, there is a chance <laughs> this girl likes me. There is something here. You don't use the word love so carelessly and on social media. I know it was about sushi, but that opened my heart. It was about sushi. And I was like, I got a message this girl. So I messaged her back and hey, Oh, I like sushi. What do you like sushi? What foods do you like? And I just used every opportunity to message her repeatedly. I think almost every day or yeah. every other day I would respond to you. And so that, that message sparked something in my heart. Hope was <gasps> regained <laughs> and awakened that this might work out after all. Okay, I don't want to seem very stereotypical here, but I've never seen a white guy loves sushi as much as Sebastian. <laughs> I haven't really stalked him in the past, but every time I clicked, like his story would always be sushi. So I think the Lord used the sushi. So at the time, like I love that he loves sushi, and I was living in Redding, California, studying at a ministry school, and they didn't have good sushi as much as they would have in Vancouver. So I was jealous that he was having sushi, and I wanted to have sushi, and. Basically, that was a conversation starter. I found out that he also went to the same ministry school for three years and I was just like flabbergasted because I met him in Vancouver and so as he was talking to me and telling like a little bit about himself, it really caught me like off guard where I'm like, oh, I thought you were a very closed person but you're actually sharing like yourself to me and so I really enjoy that I'm like I want to know a little bit more about you just because it felt really special that he was talking to me and it would be messages after messages of like paragraphs long when we were having conversations and so I think came to a point where I was cooking one day in the kitchen and my phone keeps dinging and dinging and dinging I told them my roommate is this a minister again he keeps like he keeps talking to me like it's dinging like every single second and she's like my okay, kids because she, he likes you and I was surprised I literally like took like three steps back and I'm like as the Lord looked in the ceiling I'm like oh, he likes me what <laughs> I did like you <laughs> a lot <laughs> I started praying about Melke. I said, God, I want you to, I want you to show me a she the one. And and God did. I actually got a dream. Uh, the same time that you got a dream, actually, we didn't know this, but God started uh, showing to us this. And I started uh, sending her photo to to all my family, to some close friends, and they all liked Melke across the border. Like, wow, she looks amazing. Like, yes, yes, yes. And that's, that's like never happened before. Usually people are like, I don't know, I don't know. But everyone was like, yes, we like her. We like her, we like her. So it was a green light after green light after green light. No red flags, no speed bumps. It was like the Lord was saying, go, go, go. Sebastian is such a popular guy that I did not know that I was also about to become popular <laughs> secretly without me knowing. Here comes Christmas break, and I find out that Melchia is coming home for Christmas, home to Vancouver. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I have one week. I gotta see her as much as possible. I gotta find a way to spend as much time with her. I gotta make a good impression. This is my chance, Christmas Aww. break. Like, this is one week. So I, I started researching what's happening on Christmas, concerts, coffee shop, restaurants, activities. I had like a game plan prepared like weeks before Christmas break. I didn't want to go back home for Christmas initially and it was just this abrupt decision where I'm like, okay, I'm going home and my parents were shocked. I probably should like meet up with this guy. As a friend, I said, as I really, really thought like a coffee, like as friends, I'm like, he knows a lot of people, maybe he's interesting, I'll learn something new, I don't know. And so I was like, hey, do you want to go out for coffee? So I asked him out for coffee, and at that moment, the Lord told me, okay, you're not allowed to ask anyone, any guy anymore in your life. And I literally didn't know that he was going to be the last person that I would ever date. And the best for last. And so, yeah, so we we go home and I told him that I only had one day to 
spend with him like one coffee date because I was busy but the Lord spoke to me clear your schedule so I cleared my whole entire schedule not knowing that we will spend every single day of the Christmas break together every day Nokia was here in Vancouver we spent together basically it started with first day on a Sunday we went to church together we went for sushi we went for coffee we went for a walk we saw Christmas lights we went to two services actually yeah two church services we spent almost 12 yeah. hours together and yeah. it was so natural the conversation <laughs> our time together it felt like I've known Melkia for a long time it was so easy it just was almost like wow this is too good to be true I was saying that inside of me like wow this girl's amazing but it just feels natural it feels like I could be myself with her my my mom told Sebastian Sebastian I think you owe me a plane ticket because <laughs> he, you basically hijacked her the whole Christmas and it was like I think the first date that we had and it was just this like I don't know it felt so genuine and real and I was so used to people opposing people that I date but people were like a magnet to Sebastian I brought him to two services to my church and also to my dad's church because my dad's a pastor everybody loved him everybody loved him even my family and I wanted people to approve like I want people's like kind of like you know feedback and everything was positive and I think at Christmas Eve he he spent Christmas with my family came over Christmas Day and met his family and then it was that night where he asked me let me be your man let me provide for you let me take care of you let me let me hold you and all those like let me this the let me be your man and it sounded like a proposal you guys and it, it was as if like let me be your future husband kind of question so i didn't know i was getting asked out and so i have to clarify a couple days later before dating or not but it was just like it touches my heart because i'm like i've always wanted somebody who is like old school and would honor me and love me and be chivalry towards me and that was perfect and I think it was um, a couple days later we went to Grouse Mountain and we watched the movie Elf and we were just so in love and I think that was that moment in time where I was like I, I, I could genuinely tell him like I love you like even though it's been a couple days he told me I love you when he asked it to your man in Christmas, Christmas Day <laughs> it was two days later where I genuinely I'm like I do love you and that was the beginning of all this it just felt like a, a dream it was so beautiful, it was so easy, everything was just flowing, there was no striving, there was no, you know, trying to, you know, put a fake front that she liked me, try to be perfect, but it just, yeah, it, there was so much grace and ease and it just, it felt natural. We did so many things, we went for movies, restaurants, we went to Cirque du Soleil, we yes. went to the mountain, yes. we did so many fun activities, she met my family, <sighs> I met her family, and through it all, there was just such an ease, like, wow, this this is yeah. the person I want to marry, I knew right there, oh, baby. Christmas Day 2019, that's, I think I looked at Melke and I said, I want to be your man, then, then. Melke has to fly back <laughs> to California <laughs> for school, <laughs> So our romance started into the long distance phase. Yes, that was good, but also painful at the same time. <laughs> and I, 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 before, before I left, I cried to him and I was like, I'm still in school, I need to finish this season. And I was like, I don't know if I can do a long distance relationship. One thing he promised me, I'll visit you every single month. And I'm like, baffled. I'm like, wow, this guy would do all that like every single month he would go and he's a traveling evangelist he's busy and he would do that for me so that really meant a lot and I knew that he was serious and I was just sur surprised by the measure that he took to pursue me thank you baby you know like truly that really meant a lot to me oh, yes I remember flying in January to visit you in California then again for Valentine's Day the next month and then again for your birthday or March so it was like month after month after month 
fun yeah. to visit you and, and we had a blast. Yeah, that was so fun. We had a blast. It was it was so natural. It was just the continual overflow of our yeah. relationship. The long distance only made us more sure of each other, only yeah. deepened that communication. It's true. So it did not take away anything. It's true. And I saw him a lot, like we would face them. But I think on January, asking God, I'm like, Lord, I love this place. Like, I love my school. I love my season. But something in my heart kind of longed to go home, which is so not me. I just want to be with Sebastian. And I miss him. And people say, like, is, did he distract you in school? It's like, no, he did. He actually, the Lord actually launched me closer to my destiny like I've always dreamt to be a wife and the Lord prepared me in that season and so I love I love their story I love every part of it <laughs> pandemic <laughs> the pandemic came in 2020 and I had to go home early and I got to be with Sebastian he was stuck in Malaysia I had to come back and we were both quarantining together in Canada and cannot see each other and that was one of the hardest times it's like we're so close yet we're so far and we just had a blast like dating in person not long distance and then he proposes in June June Father's Day June 2020 and then literally a month later we decided to get married July 25th. COVID intimate wedding. There's about 30 people there and not a lot of our family could come, but it was so special. It was the, the Holy Spirit was just all over that place and all over that day. Just give glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Proverbs 10, 22 says that the blessing of the Lord enriches and that God adds no sorrow with it. And that was a theme that kept coming to my heart throughout our dating journey because I would say, God, this feels too easy. It feels so good. We didn't have any crazy fights or arguments and the Lord kept bringing that to my heart. Sebastian, this is your blessing. When I bless you, I will not bring sorrow, I will not bring curses, but it's meant to enlarge you, to bless you, to advance you. And I could say for sure that our, our journey was just so full of the grace, the blessing of God. It's been amazing. When God brings the right one, there is no sorrow, but only blessing, only grace. We hope this testimony encourages yes. you. May God bless yes. you richly and may yes. God bring the right person in his right time in your life right if you are believing for this we just take our testimony you know and stand on the Word of God and then know that God is 100% good and that he will give you 100% peace when the right one comes at the right time and if you guys loved our story and our journey, you can actually follow us on TikTok. We have a couples TikTok. We talk about marriage. We talk about Jesus. And it's at Sebastian and Melkea. Make sure to follow us. And all of other social media will be linked below. Sebastian also has a broadcast that he does every Monday nights that we can also put down below. So thank you so much for being part of our journey and hearing us today. And we love you. And we say God bless you. Goodbye. Bye. Maybe, maybe, maybe. God, oh God. I'm not playing games, I'm not playing around, I know this, let me pursue you. And that was Christmas 2019, that was 17. Um. <laughs> 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 <laughs>